So if we take a look at my deadlift from the front, um, what we can see is basically everything looks pretty much uh, mechanically sound. Um, setup is good. Uh, my knees start outward and they stay out there. Um, my hips and shoulders rise together as I break the floor. Um, knees lock out first and then I finish the rep with my hips. Um, other than that soft lock out at the knee, pretty much everything looks about where it should. Now if we take a look at my deadlift from the side, uh, as soon as I set up, the one thing that becomes very apparent is that my spine is not exactly neutral. Uh, in fact, it's rounded over quite a bit, and yeah, my morphology might be a little bit extreme compared to most people, um, but the point still stands that I believe that rounding your back isn't nearly as dangerous. Um, if you do it correctly, it's not nearly as dangerous as people believe, and it's not necessarily an issue that you need to fix. Uh, in some cases, it can actually be advantageous. Now, I know that these two drawings might not be the best representations of um, what they're supposed to be, but you'll have to bear with me because I'm not the greatest artist in the world. Um, but basically, what I'm trying to uh, demonstrate here is that your spine naturally has, uh, it's naturally curved in either direction. Um, the lower part of your spine, the lumbar region from your sacrum uh, through the first five vertebrae, um, that has a curve backward this way. Um, and that's just the natural curve. And then the next group of vertebrae, your thoracic spine, your mid spine, um, has a curve the opposite direction and at the top of your spine, your cervical spine by your neck will curve back in the opposite direction again. Uh, the reason I think this is important to mention is because uh, generally when we talk about um, or when we talk about your spine in terms of mechanics or technique, uh, we generally think of the spine as a single lever uh, and in, that's generally true. Um, we think of it as a single straight lever uh, and if you were completely neutral uh, for all intents and purposes, your torso would be a single lever going straight. Uh, but that's dependent on you not having any sort of movement forward or back throughout your spine um, throughout the entire range of motion. Um, now, I would say that when I talk about rounding your back safely or correctly, what I mean is that um, if you're rounding forward, that would be it would be safe to do that in your thoracic spine, not necessarily in your lumbar or cervical spine. Um, reason being that your thoracic spine is already naturally curved this way, whereas your lumbar spine and your th cervical spine are not. Um, so it's more dangerous to curve or to bow over forward this way uh, in your lumbar or cervical spine because uh, that's the direction that it's nat naturally going. So basically what you would be doing is, if we imagine these blocks, these rectangles as um, the vertebrae in your, let's say, lumbar spine, and you were to bow over forward, um, basically what's going to happen is this angle here on this side is going to open up and this angle here on this side is going to um, or this gap here is going to get smaller so basically it's going to open up the disc space on this side the back side and obviously that's just not the safest position the point of this whole thing is just that um, in order to do this safely around your back safely uh, if you decide to do it most of that rounding should come from your thoracic spine um, the part of your spine that is naturally curved for it anyway um, and obviously the degree to which you round your back is going to largely affect how safe or how dangerous this is. Um, the more you round, uh, the more flexion you get out of this portion of your spine, or any portion of your spine for that matter. Um, I guess the further you get from neutral, the more dangerous it's going to be inherently. Um, because in order for you to finish that lift, you will have to get back to neutral somehow. Um, and if you initiate with flexion, that just means that you have to go through some degree of extension um, to lock out at the top. So now that we've covered the safety of rounding your back and your deadlift, um, we're going to talk about why it might be advantageous in some cases to round your back. Um, obviously on this side we have a standard deadlift setup with a neutral spine. Uh, on this side we have basically the same setup. Um, I tried to make everything about the same, you know, the height of the shin, uh, the height of the shoulder and all that, the length of the arm. Uh, the only thing that's changed on this side is obviously there is a significant rounding in the back um, and the femur, or the apparent length of the femur is shorter. Now you might be wondering, how can you make your femur shorter? Uh, but that's not exactly what happens here. When we talk about apparent length, we're just talking about the length as viewed from this angle. Um, and you can make your, your femur apparently shorter in this case by externally rotating further or getting your femurs more transverse, uh, traveling more sideways than forward and back. Um, so that's basically what's going on here. Um, now, if you haven't seen my other biomechanics videos, I encourage that you watch them first because some of this stuff might go over your head if you don't um, already understand some of the equations and terminology, I guess. Uh, but if you've taken like basic physics, you should probably be fine. Um, but either way, watch my videos. <laughs> um, the two equations that we're concerning ourselves with in this example is going to be uh, torque, which is directly proportional to the length of the lever arm and force. Um, 
The length of the lever arm just refers to the distance between an axis of rotation and the application of force. So in this example here, um, an axis of rotation, our main axis of rotation that we're concerning ourselves with is going to be your hip. Um, so the lever arm length here would be from your hip to the application of force drawn perpendicularly. Um, the force is being produced by the weight here. Uh, the force of gravity acting on this weight is being translated through this arm to your shoulder here. So the application of force would actually be at your shoulder joint. Uh, so if we drop the line straight downward through that application of force, which just happens in this example to fall directly in line with your arm if your uh, shoulders are directly over the bar, um, we can drop this line straight down and draw a perpendicular from the axis of rotation, your hip, to that application of force. And this length from here to here is going to be your lever arm length. Um, and then the next equation is going to be work, which is equal to force times displacement. Um, displacement in this case being the difference in the angle at your hip um, and 180. So if we draw a line out this way, um, sorry, this way over here, uh, we imagine the difference from this angle to 180. Um, that is going to be the displacement at your hip because obviously in order to achieve full lockout, you have to get your femurs in line um, with your spine and your torso. Now obviously there's also going to be work done in torque, um, a torque requirement at your knee. There's a separate axis of rotation as well as your ankle, but for this example we're going to disregard both of those because uh, as I've said in previous videos, neither of those are going to be your limiting factor in your deadlift, or they shouldn't be at least. Um, and generally, um, there's not much you can do to change the uh, forces acting on these axes of rotation. Now looking at the two examples, what we see here is that um, the main difference is, or the only difference is, uh, are that in this picture the spine is rounded and the hips are much closer to the application of force. Basically what that means is that um, from here to here it's a much shorter length than compared to here to here. Um, if it's a shorter lever arm length the force is still constant assuming it's the same weight and you're on the same planet with the same gravitational pull. Um, the torque will be significantly less in this example or the torque requirement, sorry. So basically the, the force that your muscles have to produce in this side compared to this one is going to be significantly less just because your hips are closer to the application of force. And when it comes to work, uh, we can see that the hips or the angle between the hip and the spine is more open here. Um, so the difference between there and 180 is gonna be significantly less than over here. Um, and that basically just means that you're doing less work on this side than you are on this side. Um, you're making a compromise basically, you are, um, Getting your hips closer to the bar to make it easier to break the floor and to lock out at your hips. Um, and the compromise that you make there is that you're going to make it a little bit harder to finish at the very top of your lift um, because you are going to be in a certain degree of flexion. You're going to need the strength of your erectors and the rest of your back muscles to uh, pull your spine back straight at the top. That being said, for many people, especially those who have strange proportions where uh, let's say your femurs are ridiculously long compared to your torso, um, prime example would be me. <laughs> In those cases, or in many cases, it just makes more sense to make that compromise and to get your hips as close to the bar as possible so that you can break the floor and you can lock out of your hips. Uh, and as long as you have sufficient back strength to uh, get back to neutral with your spine, then you're doing just fine. So just to recap, rounding your spine isn't necessarily the most dangerous thing in the world. Uh, as long as you can limit that rounding to mostly through your thoracic spine, the part of your spine that is already naturally curved over that way. Um, and obviously the degree to which you round your back uh, will largely affect how dangerous or how safe it is. And when it comes to mechanical advantages, uh, you're basically making a compromise when you round your back. The compromise is that your hips are going to be significantly closer to the bar, uh, which is going to make it easier for you to break the floor and to uh, extend at your hips. Um, but the, I guess the disadvantage that you get with that is that you're setting up with some degree of flexion and you have to somehow uh, throughout the lift, you're going to have to get from that degree of flexion back to neutral. And that's going to require a bit more work and a little more force from the erectors uh, and the other muscle groups throughout your back. A couple of important things to keep in mind is that for one thing, um, it's only advantageous, it only makes sense to get your hips closer to the bar if you can keep them that close as you perform the movement. Um, if you get your hips real close in your setup and they tend to drift away from the bar, they go up and back as you initiate your pull, then you really didn't get any advantage from that at all. Also, when it comes to rounding your back, uh, in my personal opinion, I would say that whatever degree of flexion you set up with, um, you should not be able to, or you should not allow yourself to increase the degree of flexion as you perform the lift. Um, you can either set up neutral and stay neutral throughout the entire lift, or you can go from some degree of flexion towards neutral throughout the entire lift. But you should never go from 
whatever degree of flexion to a greater degree of flexion as you perform the movement. Just because the further you flex your spine, the more you're opening up those, those little disc spaces and the more dangerous it becomes. One last thing, um, I know I said that I was going to film a Q&A last week uh, with Shauna, but unfortunately during the time that we were supposed to film that, I had a massive migraine and I had to leave um, shortly after, so we didn't get that done, but we will be doing it this weekend for sure. Uh, I'm making a promise to you guys that we will. So if you have any additional questions, um, you can ask them in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, rate, subscribe, whatever. Uh, if you want to buy Titanium Fitness apparel, go to titaniumfitness.bigcartel.com. If you want to hire me as your online coach, uh, shoot me an email at titaniumfitnesscoaching at gmail.com. Uh, and that's about it for this video, guys. I'll see you next time. <laughs>